Yeah, where's your makeup team? You Hello, happy. everybody. Welcome to Amaze Berlin. Today, here from Urban Spree Live, it's my last moderation. And um, I have a wonderful and special guest, Jay Palmer, for the live cooking show. Hello, Jay. How are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. Um, let's not talk about us, uh, me. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, it was a very, very nice evening um, last night. So, nice celebration. Um, and uh, it was long, it was very long. We had a lot of stuff to discuss because about the award show and how it was running. And um, so it was suddenly it was five and I went home at six, went to bed for a few hours and then back into the studio. That's why I'm looking a little bit red in my face. So hopefully not too bad. Jay, you look great. Thank and you, you. probably slept well and long. <laughs> yeah. I no party. party. So no. you prepared for the cooking? I think so, yep. So you want to cook Gallic noodles. Mm -hmm. What is no, the I'm story sorry. behind? Nice. I like Gallic. Me too. I'm going to use the whole clove or bulb. I mean, um, yeah, for a long time, I've had a gluten free diet because I thought it ran in my family, but I got tested and found out that I actually don't have a gluten problem. So I've been very much enjoying all the gluten since then. And I play The Sims a lot. And in The Sims 4, there's this dish called garlic noodles that you can make. And even though it's like really low res and looks kind of weird, I always thought it looked really tasty. So it was one of the first things like that I made with gluten to eat, and it's very tasty. And um, this this um, above your head, this is something what you created? No, this is a snap filter. Like, oh, really? It's hat. it's ah oh, okay. I was gonna make one myself, but I was like, I wonder if someone else has made one, and this one's really good, right? Yeah, yeah, it's it's great. I also want to have something like that. <laughs> So, um, so you throw garlic into the pan, and uh, oh yeah, first you have to cut it. Yes. Yeah, and peel it, which takes a while. Hmm. Let's make that. Is it not that garlic that um, I mean, you eat it, and then you don't, you can't go out anymore? So because it's <laughs> like, mm, it's a little bit too much. But oh, yeah, uh, I, sure. I, I know that garlic is. I, I couldn't eat garlic for almost I don't know. 10 years, I don't know why, because I couldn't smell it really. But suddenly, I, I also discovered a dish, it's just broccoli with garlic. And I put it into a pan, and then it just goes for whatever, half an hour in the pan with a little bit of soy sauce, and then garlic, and uh, it's so delicious. And it just, um, yeah, it came back now the taste of garlic. Now I really love it. And also because somebody told me it's very, very important, especially when you're getting old, you have to eat garlic. It's good for your brain and for your blood. And um, yeah, I'm almost 50. That's so I have to take care now about my health. So I, I'm not young anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that garlic dish with broccoli sounds really good. Mm. Um, I make something like that sometimes too with also a little bit of ginger. Um, super so you cook a lot at home? Oh yeah, a lot. And um, you also create a lot of games, right? So uh, yeah. Since since when we are work? It was since when we know each other? I don't know, but uh, I think it's. Ah, uh, it's gonna be longer I, than I think five years. Two thousand thirteen or something like that. You also been yeah, part maybe. of uh, of the Amaze Fest. Um, no. I, I think it was because... Yeah, I'm not so sure uh, when, when it was, you know? Mm. Can you remember? Because I just always have this in, in my mind that you are working on some kind of electronics and v uh, not brain waves and, and VR and something like that. And you do research at the Charité, something like that was in my mind. It's kind of... Um, oh, yeah. yeah the, but it's a long, long time ago. I don't know when it was, but... Uh, I mean, also Fever, the, the, the game, but mm -hmm. should be in the, in the Amaze space <laughs> to play. Yeah. Uh, 
um, um, it's also about brain, right? Yeah. Um, so like at work, I do like more serious scientific brain stuff. And I think the thing that you're referring to about the VR and the EG, like the brainwave stuff is some of the projects we do at work, you wear these like headbands that sense your uh, brain data, like your brain makes electrical activity while it's communicating with itself. And you can kind of read that with the like passively with a device. Mm -hmm. And then you can use that as an input for games. So uh, you can kind of tell like how relaxed someone is or mm -hmm. how stressed someone is by that electrical activity. And then you can make an experience that's like using that information. So mm -hmm. I was also doing that in virtual reality. Um, those things can kind of work together. You a lot of stuff on your head and face. Uh, yeah. And yeah, I almost did a workshop at Amaze, I think around 2013 or 2014 about it, but I think something happened with one of the spaces and we like lost the, like the physical space to do it in. So mm. I think we just put it off and- Oh yeah. really? Okay. Yeah. I think that's what happened. I have a bad memory. Yeah, <laughs> Something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, um, I, I was also very happy that you joined the, the Amaze Train Jam. Um, it was uh, 2020, oh, yeah. the VR chat one. That was so fun. I Oh man, I met so many great people, like the people at the Metaverse crew. They yeah, yeah, the Metaverse crew, South Africa. Yeah. yeah, they're so nice and like, they really like helped me learn a lot about VR chat and virtual reality and the metaverse. And I've been following their work since that train jam. And I just like love everything that they're doing. Like the jam was fun, but the people I met there were like, yeah, yeah. Made it so good. I also enjoy working with them. So, I mean, they created the whole Amaze train station and um, we are always putting new trains in there. And um, so we, uh, yeah, we're working together and they, they're so creative and, also, the the, the museum, museum, uh, museum um, performance uh, from mm -hmm. uh, Tosca and and Zara, where they're also involved, it's just incredible. And then how how quick they also built these worlds, right? I mean, it's just like maybe a month of work, and so beautiful and detailed, and it's uh, incredible. And it's not easy. I think it's not easy what they're doing, and they, but they do it really proper. It's a good team. Even when they work on a lot of other stuff, but still they have time to do other things like that, you know. Even when it's more yeah. like pro bono, you know. But uh, they they really have uh, a lot of fun, and they they inspired me as well to actually do a little bit more in VR chat. Before it was like, oh yeah, VR chat. Mm, I know, mm -hmm. 2016, blah blah blah. But uh, then I jumped in again, and uh, of course, I mean, the pandemic helped a little bit to 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 also realize that there is kind of technology what connects people. <laughs> and VRChat is really doing that very well. So I had a lot of fun. And suddenly you just hang for five or six hours in, v in VR, wear the glasses and you just uh, had a great conversation with people around the world. So what, totally. was, uh, what was for you the, the excitement or what is the excitement of VR or VRChat? Uh, definitely during the pandemic, during lockdown, and you couldn't see anyone in real life, VR chat really kind of scratched that social itch of just being like in a random space, having random cool conversations with people and meeting people and doing silly things. Like, I mean, it's not possible in real life, but like, you know, someone comes in with a gigantic centipede avatar that looks ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And then someone shouts like, let's all be centipedes. And then everyone's a centipede and wiggling around in VR chat and laughing together. And it just feels like silly, spontaneous, mm -hmm. fun. And I really miss that. Like during this COVID lockdown is just like doing stupid stuff with people in real life, mm -hmm. like a same space. Mm -hmm. So VR chat was really good for that. And also the art. That? Mm. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a great no. place to show your art. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it was, it's a great thing. I mean, you also made a nice sculpture in there. And, and I mean, it's definitely crazy what, what you actually can, can present. And, and also when you have a nice team and, and, and a place. And I mean, what was the world you, you, you created? Also, this with jellyfish, right? So, mm -hmm. jellyfish san sanctuary? Yeah. What uh, was that about exactly? What was it was just a place to hang out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, it's just a world like 
I made that it was the place that I would want to be in. So it's like kind of vapor wavy and has like all these broken columns and neon jellyfish that I painted in tilt brush and stuff. And then my partner Nick made this like really chill like synth wave uh, underwater Atlantis theme kind of music and we added like some spatial effects to it so when you talk there like it has like some semblance of privacy depending on like where you are in the space you can like hang out and talk in little groups or go yeah. in like the main plaza area in the middle and have like a bigger group conversation yeah well, how how, you, <laughs> how did you get into into um, this kind of development I mean are you a game developer did you study something like that or uh, was it more learning yourself teaching yourself or studied you studied something like that or maybe you have a programmer backdrop background no i i studied i learned everything myself basically mm -hmm. so like i'm formally trained in like 2d visual art like illustration but um when i entered that field like to work i didn't really like it And I sort of slowly transitioned to video and animation. And that was okay for a while, but I just had this need to like do more than that, like more than a static, like time-based piece. And um, one of my clients was like, could you do this, but like as a video game? And I was like, maybe. And then that day I just started doing Unity tutorials and now eight years later, it's my job oh, wow. <laughs> still. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I really like it. Like, um, I definitely feel like I hit a medium that I feel comfortable and satisfied with, whereas I always felt a little bit like I was missing something when I was just doing drawings or animations. Mm. Okay, uh, I feel like I should talk about what I'm cooking just for a second. Yes, <laughs> like, of course, of course. Yes. Look at all this garlic. This is Yo. a whole head of garlic, and I didn't feel like using that much ginger, so it's about the size of like one mm. D6 dice chopped up. And it's not even minced that carefully. You don't have to chop it that like professionally. Just roughly like that is good. And that's the hardest part of the whole dish, actually. The rest is easy. Mm. Okay. <laughs> And now you put it into a throw it into, into a pan, yeah. pan with butter or with oil. I'm using vegan butter, so um, each vegan butter brand is a bit different. But this one's mostly sunflower oil. I like this one because it kind of tastes like buttery. Um, so this Bio Al San one. Oh, But also okay. there's this one you can get at Etika called like Vegan Block or something because they can't call it butter for some stupid reason. That one's really tasty too. I'm not so much into vegan actually. Vegetarian, yes, but uh, I, I, I just tried a, a vegan pizza today, and it was. Uh, uh, um, I, I didn't know that. I, I did not know that. Um, There's vegan cheese existing, so because mm. um, I also don't know from what this uh, what is what is in there, <laughs> how it is made. This kind of vegan cheese you told me before, so uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's lots of kinds of vegan cheese. Like, um, I mean, you can get like these vegan cheese slices that are like craft singles, which are basically not cheese either. It's like an oil-based thing. Um, but there's also cheeses that are vegan that are made similar to like traditional cheeses. So instead of like cow's milk, they'll use like oat milk or cashew milk. Like for example, at Pagans, you can get this cashew camembert mm. and it's made exactly like regular cow camembert, but it's made with cashew milk instead and it's really good. Mm. Yeah, super good on pizza. Yeah, yeah, it was super delicious and uh, actually you don't miss the cheese. So um, it's because it's cheese, it's on it. Even when it's not cheese, I mean it's vegan cheese. Mm. Oh, you could also use like vegan cream, like like or vegan yogurt, and do like a flamkuchen with like herbs and onions and mushrooms. That'd be really good too. That like you don't good. need to use that vegan cheese. Mm. Yeah. Are you vegan? I'm vegetarian, but vegetarian. I think every day I get a little bit more vegan for some reason. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I, sometimes um, I also think like it's much better to to be a vegetarian or vegan, but then, oh, then I'm, suddenly I like to have a burger. You know, I need to. Have, have you a had burger. the Beyond Burger yet? Hmm? Have you had a Beyond Burger yet? No. Like those. Oh man, 
Uh, Yo-Yo's and Friedrich Saint has them, but lots of burger places have these Beyond Burgers, and it yeah. like, for me, it really it's so close to meat that it almost makes me uncomfortable. I'm like, I'm vegetarian. This tastes too much like meat. <laughs> it triggers. It triggers. Eh? <laughs> yeah, I'd be curious what you think of it since you like miss the burger and that's a craving. Like, what you'd think of it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely a, a good thing to to not eat meat. So, but. Um, and I mean, it's, it's not. I mean, it's it's more like the, um, um, yeah. I mean, the chewing. I think it's more like <laughs> it's it's not it's not so much the taste. So it's uh, um, just um, yeah. It's different when you bite in when you chew. So I don't have yeah. the word in English now. I, I think I forgot a lot yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe part of your brain cells, so <laughs> <laughs> my English is uh, it's very below zero. Sorry for that. <laughs> it's okay. I think I know <laughs> what you mean anyway, though. Okay, so like with this dish, you don't like fry it really hard until it's mm -hmm. like browned. You're just kind of like mm -hmm. frying it lightly until it's softened. So I've just melted the vegan butter and I'm putting the garlic and ginger in there, and I have it on like pretty like medium heat because I'm not in a hurry. If I like really wanted to cook this fast, I'd probably turn it up and cook this faster. But since we have an hour, I'm taking my time. Mm -hmm. And how long, mm -hmm. I mean, sorry, how long has it to be in the, in the, in the, in the, in the pan? No, it has to uh, be brown or how does it work? No, not, not no. brown, just soft and translucent. So that, okay. like depending on the temperature, it could just take like one minute even. But since I have it pretty low, it could take a few minutes. I'm just going to watch it carefully. Oh, in the meantime, I can start cooking the spaghetti. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I'm going to actually mute yeah, this for a sec because it's going to be loud. Like the water is going to be very loud. One sec. No problem. Waterfalls. Where is the cat? Where is your cat? I saw the cat at the window. How are you in the live stream? Hopefully you have a nice Saturday. So, water. You, you put the salt as well into the water? When yep, and a little bit of oil. And a little bit of oil. Why? Why you put oil in there? You know, I think it might be one of those cooking things that could either be real, like it does something, or it could just be one of these <laughs> things that people do because someone else told them to do it. Yeah, yeah, I and think I've, so too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never really looked it up, which I've done it like both ways, like just plain water and also with oil and salt. But I figured since I'm on YouTube, I might as well do it the chef way and put the salt and the oil in it. But yeah, I'm not sure if it actually does anything. Mm. <laughs> and um, I mean, how is Berlin for you? Since when do you live in Berlin? Uh, I think it's getting up onto eight years now. And uh, I don't know, I, I really like it. Like, I feel pretty at home here. Like, more than even my home country. Like, I'm from uh, Toronto, Canada. And... Uh, yeah, I don't know if this is like my forever home, but I can't really imagine living anywhere else. I yeah, I mean, Berlin is fun. <laughs> I'm here since um, almost 20 years now. And um, I can't imagine to live somewhere else. Sometimes, of course, you just want to go away because everything is too much or, I mean, or nothing is changing. I mean, Berlin is a lot of things are changing pretty rapidly, but um, it's just bored. You know, you're bored of the people, always the same, you know, even when it's a big city, but somehow it's always the same, you know, and um, you just need to have uh, new wallpapers, kind of. And I, when I was, for example, in Johannesburg, more often, I was really falling in love with the city and also with the city vibe and, and um, also the art scene and uh, game development scene. But then when you just realize after a few, when you stay there for a few weeks or something, then it's also, you know, I mean, it's not your home somehow. And I, I don't know if it will become my home. And um, now I really decided, okay, I stay in Berlin. 
And uh, also during the pandemic, I was feeling very comfortable also to stay at home because before for me it was like, yeah, Berlin, you know, it's party city, lots of clubs and um, lots of stuff to do. But um, yeah, I just realized that I don't need it anymore so much. So as I needed it uh, a few years ago. And I basically I can focus much better than uh, 10 years ago. <laughs> 10 years ago, uh, I was not much focusing. It was, it was all, over, all over the place. So there was no clear line. So I basically, a maze helped me to get focused. <laughs> so, really. It was my therapy. So <laughs> my maze is my therapist. therapist. <laughs> to become better. <laughs> do you think you'll stay in Berlin then? Or do you think you're... Are you thinking about maybe moving? Yeah, it's... Uh, uh, um, I don't know. I, mean, I don't want to talk about my, my. Oh, we don't have to talk about that <laughs> at all. <laughs> Never mind. I, I told you, don't ask me questions. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. Uh, I mean, um, you kind of brought it up, so I thought maybe. Yeah, yeah, it's but... true, true. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I like the Alps. I mean, I grew up in Bavaria and the Alps, and um, I really see this as well as home. I mean, even when I don't like the people there because they're super stubborn and conservative and horrible and right-wing, not everyone, but I mean, this is the Bavaria is horrible, horrible people. <laughs> sorry. Oh, wow. <laughs> sorry to all the Bavarians. <laughs> <laughs> My brother lived in Bavaria. He no, wasn't... I mean, I can say that I'm a Bavarian. So <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I moved to Berlin to be in a more liberal environment. Um, but I really, really like the Verena project manager is coming as well from Bavaria. Everybody looks at me like... <laughs> <laughs> oh no, did you get yourself in trouble? <laughs> <laughs> oh God. No, no, I mean the, 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 um, the mountains are beautiful, the grass is very green, um, the, um, the trees are huge. And, and you have snow there, you can go skiing and hiking, and there's something what, uh, yeah, kind of makes me happy and brings me on the floor, and uh, that's why I'm always going there. So, it's a, it's a nice place. And I don't know if I want to move there, even when I'm old. I think I'm going to stay in Berlin, because I want to be in the melting pot, you know? I want to, even when I'm old, I want to be there, just to be part of something yeah I don't want to escape into the into the countryside it's nice to go in the countryside but it's more like holidays I like I like to be in the city I feel like Berlin's a pretty green city too like it's not the same as going into the countryside but there's lots of really lovely park and wooded areas when you need like a second to be away from the city and just stare at a tree or a, a lake for a second yeah which which uh, park is your favorite one <laughs> uh Berlin. that's a hard question <laughs> uh maybe trap tower because it has such a large variety of features like the jungen and and it's like island there with a the beer garden and then there's like the gigantic like communist like oh, yeah, sculpture right. monument yes. that looks mm. like an alien landing site yeah totally <laughs> yes it's insane yeah i i just yeah i mean it's hard to pick a favorite there's lots of other parks i love too but if i had to pick one it would be chetel i think and it's also very nice um the how is it called the island of youth or something like that yeah jungen and when you go over the bridge yeah, there's a nice beer garden there, and yeah. you can rent paddle boats and mm -hmm. hang out. We've been to Plentewald in this kind of uh, fun park, the old one. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> when I first moved here, that was the first thing I did was like climb the fence and go in there and get yelled at by security. It was really <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. It's beautiful. I think you can get an official tour there. Now, right, right. You can do official tours. Yeah, that's true. That's true. No, I also been there once uh, for for a concert. I mean, sometimes there are parties, um, and it's just uh, incredible. Do you know the story of this kind of um, of this um, uh, um, of the owner of this park? I have heard some of it. Yeah, yeah like I mean, it's something a documentary about, about this person. 
yeah, yeah, he just... Uh, oh my God. Right, right, I mean, <laughs> right, he went to, I think, Colombia or something like that, with, with all his gears, <laughs> and, and then suddenly got into drug business and <laughs> whatever. So now, uh, I think he's still in, in jail, I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> I think the saga continues with like his son or something. Like the yeah, father yeah. was doing some of it and then like the son continued the cartel or something. I don't know. Yeah, I have to watch that documentary. Yeah, yeah, me too again. Could be also a very nice game, right? Making a game about <laughs> his story. So. Yeah, or like an abandoned uh, Berlin or amusement park would make a good game. Oh, setting. yeah, 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 yeah. What kind of games you playing yourself? Ah oh, man, all kinds of stuff. Like, uh, I just replayed "Everything Is Going to Be Okay" by Natalie Lawhead. Played it maybe three times in my life, and every time I play it, it's just like I notice something different about it. It's beautiful. Um, but I Do also you play like, art house all, games. Yeah, like all the time. Um, I really liked Chain. The, one of the projects, one of the more recent projects by the Haunted PlayStation people. Uh, what else? I just started to play Fortnite. <laughs> oh man, that, that <laughs> requires like a mental acuity that like I don't have. Like the kids are just so fast and they like own me immediately. Like I don't. <laughs> how are you? How are you surviving in Fortnite? <laughs> And the, the crazy thing is, uh, I think the, I was playing with my son, he's eight, and uh, he has this peer pressure. <laughs> so, because the kids are already playing with seven, six or seven, starting to play Fortnite. And somehow he has, he's in this group. So they started with Minecraft and stuff like that. Now they all play Fortnite. And they're so good, and he knows everything about it. And uh, we played, we, sometimes we play together. I'm not playing alone. I always play. With, he has, he's asking me if I want to play with him to show. He shows me, you know, he shows me how this works. You know, for him, I am a total noob. What I am as well in Fortnite, that's for sure. And uh, but it's so much mu so much fun playing with my son together. Um, I mean, we also play chess, right? But uh, uh, it's another part of it's another th uh, fun thing. Um, I, I, I because at the, I was at the beginning, I was totally against it, so, oh no, it's just about shooting, blah, 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 blah. So, uh, but it's, it's kind of a little bit more, it's, a, it's more like communication and uh, uh, um, meeting people and also express yourself, and it's, it's nice, nice. Somehow, I really, I have nothing against anymore. I already said to him, hey, you can earn a lot of money, maybe you should train a little bit more. You don't want to be like your dad, you know, having no money, you know. <laughs> so go to esports, do it, you know. <laughs> um, but I don't know if they're in Berlin, some kind of esports uh, um, teams for Fortnite. Maybe we should make idea. one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's a good idea. Yeah, I don't training play Fortnite. kids. Yes, <laughs> yeah. the Fortnite trainers. What about art games, esports? Hmm? <laughs> what about like somehow like arts, art games, esports? Like, oh yeah, like a team of people who play mm. art house video games. I don't know. <laughs> which which game would be good fitting? <laughs> I don't know. This is such a four twenty stupid idea. I don't know. Maybe just not which ones. Maybe like trying to play them all because there's so many. That's true. That's true. Yeah. But uh, I mean, it's, do you also think that, that they are hard to find? Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, there's it? lots, and I, I mean, it's hard to find ones that like I really resonate with, and I'm not sure like how that could be better. Like, there's a certain type of feeling I like. Like, I like horror games. I like things that scare me, but mm. I don't like things that are like gruesome or violent or have certain kinds of violence in them. So like it's hard to find like just that right spot of like mm. spooky art game. How how do how where where do you find your games? So is it or um, Mo how, mostly itch? How, mostly itch, and then you search for something, or uh, it's more like uh, that it's something is popping up, or you're following people, and then you get recommendation. 
Yeah, I like that. It's like there's like lots of like I feel like there's a good network of like spooky art games creators mm -hmm. and you start following them and then you hear about their projects and their friends' projects and it goes mm -hmm. from there. It's true, it's true. Do you think it's not necessary that it's curated? Because HIO is not really curated content, right? I mean, it's, it's just a lot. No, <laughs> just... I, would, I would love if it was curated. Oh, Natalie Lawhead made a good post recently on their blog about like their favorite horror games on itch. That was a great resource. Mm, I'd love okay, to see yeah. more of that. I mean, also Lorenzo Pia did uh, uh, something about Bitsy games, right? I mean, mm. it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe our maze can also start like something like that. So making. Totally. That's what we use the esports team for. To yeah, find yeah, the, for all the good stuff from thing, them. Yes, mm. <laughs> <laughs> after after this festival, I need a break first. So definitely mm -hmm. for 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 two weeks. I think I'm gonna be back on the 15th of August. So. And I start doing something new. What what are you doing? What, what are you working on at the moment? Is there something? I'm working on Fever still, so like I'm kind yeah. of trading it like a dream diary. So when I have like a new dream idea for it, I'll work on it and then add it to the main project, like branching off somewhere. So I think like eventually it'll just become like a weird rabbit hole of dreams connected to dreams and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also working on that infinite museum generator still. Uh, I'm not oh sure yeah, you there was this museums game gem. Yeah. Yeah. So it was. Um, I just heard that it was uh, fantastic. Also, was talking yeah. yesterday to Frauke, saw the video for the first time, and also uh, the results of the game gem. So, how was it to work and to talk to museums people? Because I mean, are they? different in the thinking or are they curious or ask, they're asking questions or is it more that they are demanding? <laughs> <laughs> right? I don't right. know. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> like, I'm used to this kind of stuff because like at work at the research lab, like I work with scientists and researchers a mm. lot. So I'm used to talking to them. But like, it's probably different than that. They have a different language and a different frame of reference working in museums and with artifacts and a different expectation about how they want the work to be viewed and interacted with. But mm. I feel like the museum people and the games people during the jam came to some kind of shared frame of reference eventually. Like I think they learned from each other and like talking. Like I think it was nice that way. Mm. But um, you have to, during the game jam all, all freedom, right? So you uh -huh. can do whatever you want or I mean, but you don't want to um, destroy artifacts or um, their, their, their stuff, right? Or is it something what they also kind of um, um, want to see something like that, that you actually destruct some of the pieces and maybe you have to find then some kind of clues you know, to bring it all to bring it again together? Mm. I think there was like a bit of both, like one of the projects broke the artworks up into pieces and then asked the user to put them back together again in a way that okay. they like. And I think the museum's curators like liked that idea because like it's not really destroying anything. It's just appreciating the different artifacts, like different components and the user like finding their own way to appreciate the objects as a new construct. I don't know. Like I, the good thing with like digital stuff is you're not really destroying anything. Like everything yeah. is fine. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a good thinking. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, in, in the digital world, you can basically do whatever you want, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I worked on a project like, or I'm still sort of working on it. It's not published yet. With um. A museum that has a collection of these paper dioramas that they used to use to plan ballets like in the 1800s so like there would be these beautiful elaborate sets for the ballets with all these like props and characters and stuff and they would mock that up in paper and then make like a full like to scale 3d model including like the stage and all the lighting and rigging and everything 
but these works can't be exhibited because they're really fragile and made out of paper, so no one ever sees them or hears about them. So we are working on digitizing them so that people can look at them in VR or mm -hmm. in AR, because that's literally the only way they can be exhibited. So I think there's lots of work out there that we just don't see or hear about that I think would really benefit from being turned into like a, a game or some kind of virtual experience. And how do they approach you or are you approaching them and you're coming out um, with a concept or how, how is this working, working with scientists? Is it something that <clears throat> you work in the research lab and then you are the game developer and the expert? And <laughs> expert, haha. <laughs> No, I mean, it's a, uh, 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 but that's why, this is my question, you know, I mean, how do scientists work or would like to work with game developers? Is it that really that they are then suddenly the creative director because they know much better because they have all this kind of uh, uh, knowledge, you know, and they basically using the game developer to just <laughs> get their goals out? So, uh, uh, or how do you see you yourself in this kind of process then? as a developer? I think there's lots of different ways to engage. Like I think the description, the bad one that you just gave where the developer is being kind of like taken advantage of definitely happens. But that's not like my current relationship with the lab. Like, um, I mean, it's, it's an interesting, weird experience. So like the people I work with are all like ne computational neuroscientists, meaning that they do like brain simulations and mathematical models of brains about how the brain works. Like it's very theoretical, but it's also like tested against like biological data to prove is this model like realistic or not. And their heads are like completely in this, this scientific, uh, abstract, very conceptual sort of place. So when they come to me and they're like, put that on the computer i'm like oh fuck, man all right how are we gonna do this so like bringing this into something that's like realistic and broken down into like workable pieces it's like can be really hard and frustrating but it's also like an interesting challenge too like i like being able to take this stuff that's like really confusing and crazy and then put it into something that like my mom can interact with or a child can interact with and it's in my case i'm really lucky that the conversation happens that way Mm. And like I'm hired in house in the lab, but I also know other people who work in like biomedical communication companies where there'll be like a few developers and then like they approach the labs themselves independently and be like, hey, we can do this with your science stuff. And then they mm. work like in contracts kind of mm. situation. Yes. I, I, I really, really enjoy that um, so many people are interested in video games also to bring it in-house, like theaters and uh, opera houses and everybody's super excited about the new technology and game mechanics and um, also how to use the hardware for new content and uh, <clears throat> it's super happy to also see how many people from outside the industry, the game industry, are coming to the festival or like to connect now because years before, especially when we started the maze, nobody wanted to have something to do with video games. I mean, definitely not theaters or even mm -hmm. the funding um, funds also have, we had problems with that. So we were always on the edge, but now it's really that, yeah, it's, the pandemic in a way also uh, um, helped to, <laughs> that the, yeah, that people are rethinking um, how they can be part of a digital world. Yeah. Totally. I feel like a lot of the prejudice that games used to face is like slowly fading away. Like I had a lot of really weird experiences like 10 years ago where like I was working with an art director on a, like a, a projection art installation. So it was like a big 3D dome thing with like lots of artwork, whatever. And she was like telling me in private later, like, oh my God, like I went to this like theater, like university student class and they were like putting together a virtual reality theater performance and it just like made me cry. And I'm like, cause it was so cool. And she was like, no, because it's so depressing. I'm like, why? <laughs> and she like, she thought that somehow the VR was like, 
losing sense or touch or something in mm. the performance but for me it was like the exact inverse it's like no it makes things that weren't possible to sensory experience now possible like it's it's just different it's not like mm. a loss but she really interpreted it as some kind of like loss or something i wonder what she thinks now if she still thinks that but like i've seen so many amazing like live performances with virtual reality like the mycelia mushroom thing like last night was like amazing yeah. it was so yeah. good yeah tonight is also one one of the shows i think it starts at 11 until 12 so it's a one hour performance tonight you still can get some tickets and you can check it out on vr chat you just go to our website um it's the last show so they did then three shows um yeah so your your dish is ready yep i'm gonna plate it now <laughs> i didn't really talk about so much what i was cooking but like it's just the sauce, like the ingredients are posted on the event site, like soy sauce or tamari if you're gluten free, brown sugar, miso paste or another fermented bean paste, mm -hmm. like dobu yang also works. And then something spicy like sambal oleak or sriracha, or if you have like a friend who makes hot sauce, mm -hmm. it gives you a big bowl of hot sauce, you can use that. Um, and some sesame oil. And then you mix that in with the cooked spaghetti until it looks like really glossy and shiny nice. like this and like before i drained the pasta i just used the same measuring cup i mixed the sauce in to grab some of the spaghetti water yeah like it's just like starchy water that like when you add just plain water to the spaghetti it can just make it kind of runny and gross but when you use the starchy water it like really sticks to it like a, like a nice sauce <sighs> and then you put some yeah. vegan cheese on it yeah, if you want, you can put a uh, vegan Parmesan um, mm -hmm. or nutritional yeast, which is what I'm going to do because I don't have any vegan cheese right now. We have to, the, the, the recipe we have on the website, right? Yep. Very good. So if you go to the website, you can see the recipe from Jay. Um, I'm really getting hungry now, even when I had <laughs> a pizza. So, okay. What is this now? It's black sesame seeds. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put some white sesame seeds. They just, they look good. Like the color contrast on the orange red noodles. Black and white seeds. And I'm just going to quickly chop up some of this green onion. Like I put the whites of the green onion in before, but now I'm just going to mm -hmm. chop this fresh green onion up quickly. <laughs> Donut staring at me, my cat. I'm like, this is not for you. You're not gonna like this. <laughs> cat <Vegan>. is hungry. <laughs> Cats are carnivores. I don't know why she thinks she wants my vegan food sometimes. So what are you gonna do today? It's very hot in Berlin, right? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna chill for a bit and then I'm gonna go to a drum and bass party with my friend that's outside. Mm-hmm. Where's this party? uh i think it's like outside like a venue that used to have like an indoor space and so now they just kind of spilled out onto the street <laughs> i haven't been there yet actually yeah uh but i think it's called something like shoot i don't i don't actually remember i'm actually not a huge drum and bass fan it's just my friend is and she's yeah. so excited about it so yeah i'll go too thank you oh yeah where's the nutritional yeast <laughs> It looks really uh, good. Thank you. Again, not sponsored by Vegans. I keep mentioning it, but Vegans also has like really good um, vegan Parmesan that looks exactly like real Parmesan. You can mm -hmm. create it and everything. But nutritional yeast also works and is shelf stable. All right, there. That's two dishes of garlic noodles. Wonderful. Garlic noodles. By Jay Palmer. <laughs> Thank you very much for this yeah, wonderful conversation. And I'm really looking forward to meet um, in Berlin somewhere, physical. So mm -hmm. hopefully we can do the festival next year with a nice exhibition. So and, and meet in a, in, a, in a nice place with a lot of people and celebrate art house games and um, other installations. 
So I wish you a very, very nice day. Thanks, you too. And uh, bon appétit. Danke. And a nice <laughs> drum and bass party. Thanks. <laughs> I wish you a good nap and probably more much. partying. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye, Jay. Thank you. Bye.